Number 20 says to use the Laplace transform to solve the given initial value problem. We have y double prime plus 4y prime plus 5y equals delta of t minus 2 pi and y of 0 is 0 and y prime of 0 is 0. So we want to start by applying the Laplace transform to each term. And for our y double prime, that's going to give us s squared y minus s times y of 0 minus y prime of 0. And then plus 4 times the transform of y prime, which is s times y minus y of 0 plus 5 times y equals the delta of t at t minus 2 pi. Uh, that's a direct, direct delta function. And the Laplace of delta at t minus t sub naught is e raised to the negative s t sub naught. Uh, that's what we want to use. In, in this case, t sub naught is uh, 2 pi. So that's going to give me e to the negative 2 pi s. Uh, so here, y of 0 is 0, y prime of 0 is 0. So all of these initial values go to 0. And that leaves me, on the left side, it leaves me with just two terms, or three terms, all containing y. I get s squared plus 4s plus 5 times y equals, on the right side, we have that e to the negative 2 pi s. And then solve for y. I get e to the negative 2 pi s over s squared plus 4s plus 5, and uh, we'll apply the inverse transform. So for our inverse transform, the inverse transform of y is y of t. And then we have this uh, e to the negative 2 pi s. That's uh, our second shifting theorem. That's going to give us a unit step function. So it's going to give us u at t minus 2 pi uh, times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared plus 4s plus 5. And then once we get that answer, we have to transform to get the same shift. So we're going to uh, shift our t to t minus 2 pi. So let's see, s squared plus 4s plus 5 doesn't factor. Factors of 5 that add to give us 4. The only factors of 5 are 5 and 1, and they add to give you 6. Uh, so this doesn't factor. Because we have that s squared, you want to think completing the square. So I'm going to copy down this first part. And then with that second part, I'm going to complete the square. I have s squared plus 4s plus, and if you add 4, that'll complete the square. It's half of 4 is 2, and then 2 squared gives you 4. And we had 5 there as a constant, so that leaves me with a 1. And I'm going to factor that, so I'm just going to copy this down again. It may have been more efficient to do that work off to the side. But that's okay. S squared plus 4s plus 4 
is s plus 2 squared. And this is going to be our first shifting theorem. Huh, interesting problem. It has both shifting theorems. So I'm going to put this in brackets. It's going to give me an e to the negative 2t times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared plus 1. Notice I kept that e to the negative 2t inside brackets. And I'm going to do my shift at the very end. That I'll shift that, that t in that exponential to t minus 2 pi. And now I have the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared plus 1. And that's going to give me a sine. So I get u of t minus 2 pi. And then I have my bracket. And then inside the bracket, e to the negative 2t, and the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared plus 1 is sine of t. And my next step, my last step probably, or close to the last step, is to do my shift. So now inside the brackets, everywhere that I have a t, I'm going to replace it with t minus 2 pi. I get e to the negative 2 times t minus 2 pi times sine of t minus 2 pi. So I'm going to simplify that sine off to the side. I know that sine of t minus 2 pi can be simplified, and that's just sine of t because pi is, or sine is 2 pi periodic. So adding 2 pi or subtracting 2 pi gets you back to the same place. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite this one last time, and this will be my answer. y of t equals u of t minus 2 pi and then I have brackets around e to the, if I distribute through by that negative 2, I get negative 2t plus 4 pi times sine of t. And that's my answer.